Good morning. Pastor Sean here. Today is Monday, October 16th, and this is your morning prayer. So let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All right, Ezekiel 20 and 21 today. And this, uh, so chapter 20 begins with the word of the Lord coming to Ezekiel. Um, this is about four years before the destruction of Jerusalem. And this is because some of the elders of Israel have come to Ezekiel to inquire of the Lord. Uh, most likely they're, they want to know, like, hey, any, any good news? <laughs> any, any news about us returning home? Um, well, it's, it's been a couple years, so what, what's going on here? And what God then does is launch into a, a very long response that boils down to, I will not be inquired of by you. <laughs> like, you come to me <laughs> expecting to hear good news. And no, 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 no. So, and, and of course, God explains why. He goes through uh, the, the entire history of the people with him and, and gives how, you know, right from the very beginning, when God called his people um, and said, okay, you're going to be my people. Here's my covenant. Here's my statutes. Here's my, my uh, rules. Here's, here's everything. And the people said, yes, okay, great, awesome. And yet every time they rebelled. They rejected him. They rejected his covenant, his rules, his statutes. They profaned his Sabbaths. They did all these things. And each time God said, okay, well, then I'm going to pour out my wrath upon you. And, you know, you, because of your idolatry, I will I will wipe you out. But each time, instead, God said, oh, I will have mercy on you. You know, I should pour out my wrath upon you, but I will, I will show pity and I will have mercy on you. Um, so this happens again and again and again and again. So he gives all the examples down through the ages of how this happened. And basically saying that this is why, you know, it's ridiculous for you to come to me wanting to know like, oh, when, when can we go home? It's like, you're being, this is your punishment. <laughs> this is the discipline of the Lord that you are receiving. Um, now, there is one part that I want to point out. Um, verse 25 and 26, verses 25 and 26 which you might read and it might give you a pause because it's like, wait, what? Because it reads like this. Moreover, I gave them statutes that were not good and rules by which they could not have life. And I defiled them through their very gifts and their offering up all their firstborn that I might devastate them. I did it that they might know that I am the Lord. And it sounds weird because, you know, it's like, oh, he, so he gave them statutes that were not good uh, rules that, that would not give them life, and he defiled them um, through their gifts of offering up their firstborn. It just, what is going on here? Um, what he's saying is not that he, like, gave them, like, gave them evil commands, evil commandments, kind of like, you know, here's the, there's the Ten Commandments, and then at some point he's like, okay, fine, here's some evil ones for you. What he's saying here is simply that he gave them over to their own sinful desires, that um, they... <laughs> they wanted to have their own commandments. They wanted to live by their own rules. So um, God, by giving them over to them, um, giving them over to their own sinful desires, sinful um, pursuits, um, he was saying, fine, okay. It's, if, if, if this is what you want to pursue, then this is what you will pursue. Um, so, you know, in, in that his giving them over to that was him giving them well, for for them, maybe. Well, well, see, yeah, I'm I'm just doing, I'm doing what God likes. I'm doing what God wants because He's not punishing me for it, of course. So this, their point of view was, you know, they're receiving things from God and they're doing what they want too. So it was a win win for them. They didn't understand that what God was doing was giving them over to their own sinful pursuits, saying like, "That's what you want, then that is what you shall have." Um, but even in that was the, the hope for repentance. And because he says, I did it that they might know that I'm the Lord. Um, you know, kind of giving them enough rope to hang themselves, right? So eventually, maybe they would come to realize the severity of their wickedness and they would wake up and, and realize, oh my gosh, and they would repent. 
And, and we get actually that a little bit later in a chapter towards the end when God talks about the day when he would restore them. Um, and he says, basically, go ahead and serve your idols if that's what you want. Okay, thus says the Lord, serve your idols if that's truly what you want. Um, but he says, but once my discipline falls upon you for it. So as I serve them, go ahead, understand judgment is coming. <laughs> and when that happens, he says, you will no longer profane my name. Um, I will bring my people back into the land and they will know that I am the Lord. So um, the even even in, well, in bringing judgment, obviously, is, is the hope for repentance. But even when God um, kind of gives us the slack to, you know, pursue our own ways, he is not doing it because he's given up on us. Um, you know, he is just saying like, okay, if, if this is going to be the extent of your wickedness, then you, you will experience what that is with the hope that you will see just how bad that is. And you will come back that you will return to me and, and proclaim that, yes, <laughs> that, that I am your God and that, um, and, and so I can forgive you. So that's all that's uh, really going on there. Uh, the chapter then ends with a, um, a prophecy against Jerusalem, against the South, which would indicate Jerusalem. And basically he, he follows up that, that lengthy section because he ended on, on, on a note of restoration. So just in case the people heard all this and were thinking like, oh, well, see, God's going to restore us. Ah, no problem. Um, that they might think that God's promise to restore them somehow canceled out his judgment this last little bit is, is kind of like the little tag that says, and no, <laughs> judgment is still coming. Um, now, the, the chapter ends with uh, Ezekiel kind of um, lamenting to God, like, God, they, they say I'm talking in parables, okay? And it's basically him saying, like, God, they, 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 they're saying they don't understand me. Oh, oh, he's just talking in parables. What's he talking about? Um, it was pretty clear what he was talking about through most of chapter 20. So this is more like they didn't want to hear it. They didn't want to understand it. So they claimed ignorance here. They claimed that they couldn't understand. So then chapter 21, God says, okay, <laughs> if speaking about trees and forests and all this other stuff is too vague for them, let's talk about a sword, the sword of Nebuchadnezzar that, that I am giving to him that is going to cut down the people of Judah, that is going to cut down Jerusalem. Um, he's going to say, I'll talk very plainly about this. And that's what chapter 21 is, um, talking about the, um, the sword of judgment that is coming for them. There's a little bit of a performative thing in there for Ezekiel to do, where he's supposed to draw a map showing two roads, one going to uh, Rabbah, one going to um, uh, Jerusalem, and can just show the sword and Nebuchadnezzar coming to the crossroads there and uh, consulting his idols through divination, which way to go. And of course, it lands on Jerusalem. Um, to show that, yes, judgment is coming, <laughs> the sword is coming, and yeah, <laughs> this is, and, and going back to chapter 20 is to say, and this is everything that's been brought upon you. You know, they, they came to Ezekiel hoping for good news, and he reminds them, what did you expect? <laughs> there, there, there is no good news when you reject God. There, there's nothing to look forward to when you say, I don't need God. It's just all you can look forward to is, is judgment, you know, at the end of the day, you know, punishments, yes, temporal punishment. You know, we, we experience, um, you know, the God's uh, wrath over sin in, in, in ways here. Now for us, it's, it's in discipline, you know, it is not a, a final judgment kind of thing, but, but God does discipline us because, you know, we, we, we are baptized into him. We, we have faith, absolutely. And we still sin, you know, and, and he doesn't just, um, you know, certainly he, he pours his grace in abundance upon us. He forgives us, but we still sin. And so there are times when the discipline of the Lord falls upon us. You know, we all need to be called to repentance all the time because we sin all the time. Um, so, you know, this is what we see here for us. You know, how, how does this apply to us? Well, we see the grace of the Lord. We see his patience, you know, and we certainly experience that all the time. Um, but also, you know, a, a good warning for us, too, that, you know, we shouldn't get complacent about this and think and, and stop seeking repentance and stop seeking God. Even, you know, we, we should never just stop and say, well, I'm saved, so I don't need to worry about anything. I can do whatever I want. That puts us 
right into the the shoes of Ezekiel's hearers, and that was that was the big problem or one of the big problems. So, so yeah, I think uh, I think that about covers it. There you go. Let us pray. I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. All right, blessings to you on the beginning of this week. Hope you have a happy Monday. Hope everything goes well, and I will see you tomorrow. So until then, peace be with you.